If you knew anything about Aimé Césaire before coming here today, you had probably read or heard about his Discourse on Colonialism or his long poem known in English as Notebook of a Return to the Native Land. The available translations of Notebook in English are all based on editions in French published since 1956. It is important to realize at the outset that the poems we shall read and comment on this afternoon all antedate the poetics of the two titles just mentioned. We will be, in other words, examining an earlier poet than the one readers in English have known for the last half century or so. Emmy Césaire, who was born on the eve of World War I and died in April 2008, was always concerned with questions of audience. My colleagues, who are now preparing the first critical edition of his complete literary work, have made a number of important discoveries in this area to which I can only allude here. Suffice it to say that Césaire did not shrink from modifying his texts to fit the occasion. I do not use occasion in a trifling way. In Césaire's case, the occasion may be as serious as his commitment to ending colonialism in Africa from the mid-1950s onward, or indeed, his equally sincere and deep commitment to a surrealist poetics between 1941 and 1950. The first edition of Solar Throat Slashed dates from 1948 and is the next to last major poetic effort Césaire produced during this surrealist period. The first collection of poems published throughout the Americas during World War II bore the title Miraculous Weapons. It was published by Gallimard, whom you may think of here in New York as the Knopf of Paris, in 1946 through the efforts of André Breton. The third and final one was a short collection, Lost Body, which Pablo Picasso illustrated in 1949. <clears throat> what this surrealist period in poetry was about has never been well understood, and in our country it has been almost completely ignored. Apart from Clayton Eshelman's co-translation of The Miraculous Weapons in the Collected Poetry published by the University of California Press, no translations of the texts from this period have been available until now. Therefore, my co-translation of Solar Throat Slashed with Clayton has the distinction of being the first effort in English to make available to readers the high point of Césaire's remarkable first creative period. <clears throat> As I hope this afternoon's readings and discussion will make clear, the poetry in Solar Throat Slashed is marked by an originality one does not find in later editions of his work. Not that his later work isn't original, but in a quite different way. <clears throat> Given our time limitations this afternoon, it will be preferable to work inductively into Solar Throat Slashed using readings followed by commentary. We will stay close to the texts uh, so as not to overwhelm the poetry. I propose to begin with a poem that evokes the experience of being a stranger in a strange land. The subject is shared by all populations in the Western Hemisphere that trace their origins to colonial slavery. Césaire called it blues. Aguacero, beautiful musician unclothed at the foot of a tree, amidst the lost harmonies, close to our defeated memories, amidst our hands of defeat, and peoples of a strength strange, we let our eyes hang, and native, loosing the leading rein of a sorrow, we wept. <clears throat> 